Ricardo recollects as what he stated in his memoir, Those Were the Days. He wrote, In the year 1977, I embarked on a new journey as a young banker in the renowned, the Daiwa Bank, then known as Daiwa Overseas Finance Limited. My early days at the bank were filled with handling several large-scale real estate financing projects. One that particularly stands out in my memory was the syndicated loan for the reconstruction of the British America Tobacco Warehouse on Causeway Bay's Gloucester Ard, adjacent to Percival Street. This was a joint venture between Chung Kong Holdings, Sun Hung Kai, and New World Development, purchased in 1975. Upon completion, the building was christened the Elizabeth House after the Queen of England, a name decision that involved much deliberation. In addition to my involvement with the real estate projects, I also dabbled in what local banks considered a niche financing project, shipping loans. The global shipping industry was at its zenith during the 60s and 70s. With the economy booming, Hong Kong and Asia's shipping development were flourishing. Some of the most active shipping companies included the multinational enterprise of China's Ship King, Tung Ho Wan's Orient Overseas Shipping, the World Ship King Pao Yuekong's Worldwide Shipping, and the Chao family's Hua Kuang Shipping. However, the global economy took a hit in the early 80s due to the oil crisis, causing the shipping industry to suffer. Large shipping conglomerates like Worldwide Shipping had to pivot towards real estate, hotels, and transportation development in Hong Kong. This shift led to the implementation of an abandoned ship for land policy, with subsequent acquisitions of Hutchison Wampoa and Wheelock. In 1985, Pao Yuekong successfully acquired the controlling stake in Wheelock and co-founded Dragonair with Chao Kuang Piu and Henry Falk. This downturn in the shipping industry severely impacted small to medium-sized shipping companies. The question that arose was, how to handle the shipping loans previously issued by foreign banks. The only solution was loan rescheduling. Failure to do so would ultimately lead to the sale of the collateral, the ships. Yamato Bank was faced with the task of dealing with these distressed shipping clients. One case from 1979 left a deep impression on me. The client was Hesco Shipping, a medium-sized shipping company in Hong Kong with five cargo ships. Yamato Bank loaned Hesco a million U.S. dollars using their cargo ship, Man Hing, as collateral. The loan was for operational purposes, and we later developed a standby letter of credit for them with the Keelung Port Authority in Taiwan. Reflecting on these experiences, the key lessons from my journey are the importance of adaptability, strategic planning, and problem solving. In the ever-changing world of finance, it's essential to stay abreast of global trends and adjust strategies accordingly. Whether it was navigating the complexities of real estate financing or pioneering shipping loans, it was crucial to think outside the box and devise innovative solutions to the challenges at hand.